to 855-997-1170. That's 855-997-1170. And we will be happy to answer, we will be happy to tell you who who the winners are at the end of each quarter as we normally do. Um, We still want your questions too. And um, we're going to have a more live interaction during the course of the Sabbath School class. Uh, So uh, you could just put your information or questions in the chat and we'll try to answer them for you as quickly as possible. Uh, Someone will be manning that uh, chat and will be uh, answering or passing on questions to us if if we need to talk to you about them so that we can better serve you. We want you to be a class. We want you to be to be working with us as we uh, go through the the lesson study. So, without further ado, I'm going to ask um, Brother uh, Jushan Prophet to pray for us this morning as we begin our lesson study. Um, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you again for waking us up and letting us in a new week, a new Sabbath, Lord. And we know this is truly a blessing. Please forgive us our sins and help us do what is right. Help us now as we do the Sabbath school panel. Help us to learn more about you today and help many lives to be touched. Keep us safe and help us have a great service. In Jesus' precious name I do pray. Amen. Amen. As I said, um, the lesson study this quarter is a quite unique one. And uh, one of the unique things about this lesson this quarter is that on every Thursday's lesson, you know, the the lesson is outlined on a daily plan. So, But every Thursday, you get a a work assignment, a challenge. And the challenge for this week was that we should find someone that we do not know and uh, introduce ourselves to them and uh, pray for those people. Now, uh, next week when we come back, I hope that you can report to us, uh, those of you who are listening to us online, um, that you have done this. And we would definitely like to hear your testimonies as to your engagement in, in, in this. I, I already did this, I was, this lesson early this morning at another church in England. And one of my friends there was telling me that he, at, on his job, for the last, like, last uh, 20 years, he's been passing this janitor and just saying good morning and never even know the guy's name or stuff like that. <laughs> After reading the lesson this week, he decided that he would say, talk to the janitor get his name, and pray for him. And he was amazed at the camaraderie and conversation that existed between them as they, you know, as, as they uh, talked about uh, uh, the relationship. So I, I hope that you can meet some new people, that you can pray for them, and that we'll, we'll join you in praying for them so that the Holy Spirit can work on their hearts and help them to become more like Jesus Christ. So this week's lesson is entitled, God's Mission to Us, Part 1. God's mission to us. How many of you actually thought that God was a missionary or God is a missionary? You know, and, and, and this week's lesson brought out uh, this wonderful idea that some of us have not been able to, uh, probably did not think of it before. And um, we want to discuss this uh, a little bit greater detail today. So my first question is going to go to Elder Adley Philosoph. Uh, Elder Adley, why was it necessary for God to reach out to humanity? Why does, did God need to go on a mission trip, as if you, if you will? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Harrington. Good morning to everyone. Um, I think God, like you said, God is a missionary God. Um, and I think it further shows his missionary <laughs> uh, prowess or his missionary uh, initiative because the Bible says that God had to come for, for two essential reasons. I think the first reason is because fallen, because of our fallen sinful nature. The Bible says that when Adam and Eve were first created, they lived in perfection. Adam and Eve not only uh, experienced God, but they were made like God. The Bible says, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. So Adam and Eve not only looked like God, but more than that, they had the character of God. And if, which you can sum up in one word, which is God's character is just love, right? So they were made in the likeness of, uh, of God's divine love. They exhibited that love, and they also gave glory to God, which brought so much meaning and purpose to their lives. The Bible also said there was no sadness, there was no death, no crying, not even a leaf had fallen off the tree. But when sin came into the world, God had to save us because we were in a hole of sin. 
in a permanent state of disrepair and fear. And I think the Bible further, you know, shows this idea of this permanent state of disrepair when uh, Adam and Eve try to literally, you know, dig themselves out of this hole. And the Bible says they try to, you know, put fig leaves together to somehow save themselves, but it wasn't enough. And we know it wasn't enough because had it been enough, they would have been at their usual spot instead of hiding away from God. Had it been enough, they would have still loved God and, and fear would have never existed. So you can see sin is not just a separation, but it creates a permanent state of human brokenness that if God doesn't come and reach out to us and, and, and changes his mission to, to save us, we're never, we would never be saved. So we needed God to come and rescue us, to come and cover us, to stand in our place so that we can once again experience his divine love, connection, and give him glory. So that's the first reason why God had to come. The second reason is because of God's infinite love for us. You know, it is God's nature to love. And one thing I love about God's uh, love is that, you know, not only does God honor our free choice, our free will, um, but the most important thing is that God's love always makes provision. It always makes a plan so that in the case he, we need him, he's always right next to our side. You know, in the book of Ephesians, it tells us that um, before the plan of redemption was established, uh, uh, before the fall of man, I should say, redemption was established before the foundation of the world. And it's crazy because you know that God is real love because if God was truly a God of fear, like he, for fear that Adam and Eve would have messed up, he would have never created them, right? But he loved us to say, you know what? Hey, I'm going to create them anyway. And if they fall, per chance, I will provide a way to, to, to rescue them from sin. So I think, um, you know, God's infinite love shows him that not only is he a missionary God, but he's not a, a cruel God. He's not an unjust God like Satan tries to paint a picture, of, you know what I mean, of God. But God really, truly loves us. Um, I'm reminded of a story of a mother uh, who sent her son off to college. And after the first quarter, his grades were failing. He was not attending class. And so the mother decided, look, you know, I'm going to take a few weeks off of work, maybe four or five months. Oh, I think it was almost a month she took off. And she went to go sit in class with her son. She made sure that he w she would wake him up every morning. She made sure that he attended class on time. She made sure that um, he went to the library and she studied with him. And just the presence of this mother's love literally yeah. changed the trajectory of this man's life, right? Right? So this woman took a leave of absence to go and save her son. But the Bible tells us that God took a leave of absence as well. He took a leave of absence for heaven, and he took, and he took 33 years to, to come down here to come and save us, right? With the hopes that his, his presence would change us to allow us to accept what he has done for us. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? That whosoever believeth in him, the begotten son is the rescue plan that if perchance we decided, hey, God, I want you to pull me out of this hole, send down this ladder, please, so that I can walk. And the best part is God doesn't just send down the ladder. He walks to them in the hole to say, I'm going to pull you out of this situation, right, um, so that we can have eternal life. So I think it was necessary for God for two reasons, because of our fallen human's nature, but most importantly, because of his love for us, God couldn't just sit by and just watch us spiral down a pit that we can never get out of. He said, look, I'm going to make provisions. I'm going to have a plan. And if they choose it, I will, I will, I will accept. I will save them every time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, yeah. hallelujah. Do you want to add something? <laughs> also, to, um, we see that, we see that um, God cares, mm -hmm. and you see he wants to be with us. Mm -hmm. And let's make it very clear that, that God intentionally went and asked Adam, and, but he didn't see them. Yeah. And he said, you know, where are thou? Where are you? Mm -hmm. And when, when, when they came, what happened? See, the, the, the way God does it, he could have said, you know, what you guys did, you know, you, you, you shouldn't have done that. He didn't start bashing on them. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to, as Christians, we have to learn again, have a relationship. You see, the foundation of any mission, endeavor, therefore, must be centered on a relationship with the Creator and with the proper understanding, all right, of His mission. See, we must understand His nature and His character also, too. But before we understand the mission of God, it is essential to be, to be better understand, to better understand the God of the mission. So when we, when we know who's in charge of this mission, you know what happened? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go forward because my leader is indeed a great leader. And I'm willing to follow, right? Hallelujah, hallelujah. I, 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 I too, um, Elder Phyllis, I'm, I'm uh, 
totally fascinated by the genius of God, uh, or, or probably the genius of God's love, because I, I really cannot uh, fathom the depths of a love like that. And uh, uh, every time I think of it, what God has done for us in the, in the person of his son, Jesus Christ, uh, th that love sort of draws me to him even more. And you listeners, I, I, I hope that when you think of God's love and what he does for you, this mission minded God, this first missionary God, that when you think of what he's done for us, that you will definitely want to be his child and to become a missionary like he is. Uh, uh, God's mission activity is something that is really profound. And as we continue during the course of the day and the course of the quarter, we're going to learn a little bit more like it, about it. So, love, I'm going to come, I'm going to, come to you next. Um, um, I, I want to find out from you um, why did God decide to become one with man? And what w does that mean to you and me? You know, Adley talked about this love, but uh, this love was manifested in a, a very peculiar way that God decided. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah. I'm going to get happy today, Jesus. Today, <laughs> saints. Because uh, this, this is a topic that really touches my heart in a very yes. special way. Um, uh, tell us about that love. Tell, tell us, why did God decide to become human, a human being like you and me? You know, so that he could be close to us. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Uh, I'm going to begin with Isaiah 46, verse 9 to 10. It mm -hmm. says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient time, the things that are not yet done, saying, my consort shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. We see that everything that we read, and we see in the scripture, from Genesis to Revelation, it's been done by God according to his missionary strategy. In the book of Revelation, when God's people at the end of the time are united with him, and it said, then God shall be with men, and men shall be their God. we in the very presence of God. That is ultimate purpose is that his creation, his children, are one with him. In this point, we see God literally becoming incarnate in Jesus Christ. And as I continue, it's in Christianity, the belief that God became one with men in central the concept of the incarnation. According to Christian teaching, God took on human form through the birth of Jesus Christ Amen. as both fully divine and fully human, bridged to the gap between God and humanity. The incarnation holds great significance for Christian as is represent God, profound love and desire to intimately connect with humanity. It is seen as a divine act of sacrifice, redemption, and reconciliation. To Lord Jesus, Christians believe that God experienced a human condition offering salvation and the opportunity for a restored relationship, relationship with him. To believers, the incarnation means that God understands and empathizes with our struggle joys and sorrow. It demonstrates God's accessibility, probability, and desire to form a personal relationship with each individual. The incarnation is seen as an invitation to know God more fully and to experience his grace, love, and transformative power. In Christianity, God's decision to become one, one with humanity through the incarnation, it's believed to stem from his immense love for creation and his desire to relationship with us. Number one, we have redemption and salvation. 
God became human in Jesus Christ to offer humanity salvation and redemption from sin and its consequences through his life, death, and resurrection. Jesus provides the means for individual to be reconciled with God and receive eternal life. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And the second one, we see revealing God's nature. Jesus' life and teaching are believed to reveal God's character and nature in a way that humanity can understand. Justice and compassion were demonstrated. And number three, we see restoring relationship. The incarnation is seen as God's initiative to restore a broken relationship between humanity and himself. By experiencing the human condition, Jesus stands as a mediator between God and people, bridging the gap and offering reconciliation. And number four, it says, ex exemplify the way of life. Jesus' life serves as an example for humanity to follow through his teaching and action. Jesus showed the path of love, humility, selfishness, and service that believers are called to emulate. And the last one we see, defeated evil. In Christian belief, the incarnation is also linked to the defeat of evil and the power of darkness. To Lord Jesus, victory over sin, death, and evil, believers are offered liberation and hope. This is our sum of the understanding of God's mission to Lord the incarnation with Christianity. Different interpretation and in phrase can exist among different denomination and theological perspectives. Amen. I, I, I really love how you laid out there and uh, all those th those five points. I, 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 really, I, I really love that. You know, when the Apostle Paul went to Mars Hill and he started to preach there <laughs> on that day and he told him that he's going to introduce them to this unknown right. God, you yeah, know, right, huh? and he told him that this unknown <coughs> God died. The people turned and walked away because they could they could believe that God could die, you know. Right, right. <laughs> they, they, they couldn't believe that uh, that this God could love so much, so much yeah. that he was willing to die, that he was willing to come and live on earth and show us an example of, as to how to live, that he would accomplish. They could not believe that. And I know for the typical human being, that behavior of God is simply mind-boggling. We, we, we don't even want to believe it. And, and, and it, sometimes it keeps us away from God. But ladies and gentlemen, I want you to believe it. That's exactly what God did for us. And, and it is because of this love that he has for us that uh, uh, Brother Philosot brought it for us a little while earlier, uh, that he is willing to do all of this because he wants us back. No, you had, have you ever had a girlfriend that left you and you want her back? And you'll oh, do okay. anything that you want to, to, to get her back? You will go to the, to, you'll climb the highest mountain, uh, <laughs> <laughs> swim the widest river <laughs> because you want to get her back. This is what God is doing here for us. You want to say something, yeah, Harry? Also <laughs> that, um, what sin does, <laughs> see, we have to look at this, this lesson in a very unique way. Christ, he has gone back to heaven, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the Holy Spirit is here among us, and we have to manifest this way with others. Mm -hmm. And we will see that, you know, what you, what you can do, you're willing to do that for them, and they're going to say, wow, who are you? <laughs> you know? So the same love that God manifests here, he, we set the example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And brethren, as Christians, you, got, you have to be a Christian, not on Sabbath only, mm -hmm. but throughout the entire week. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's the theme that we're going to conclude with a, a, a little while there. But I, I, I think it's good to bring it up now because when we understand what mission is and mm -hmm. what mission looks like, what how, how God uh, de defined his mission, then we understand better what our mission ought to be like. And how we ought to treat mm -hmm. people, and how we ought Amen, to behave, yeah. behave, 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 behave towards people. Right. So, uh, Jusan, uh, could you? Ex I think uh, Elder Cummins already started to explain it a little bit, but I want you to go ahead and explain to us a little bit. Um, why is it so important uh, to continually dwell for God to continually dwell with humanity? Why is it so important for that to happen uh, for us here? Mm -hmm. Hello and happy Sabbath, everyone. So it is very important for God to continue to dwell with humanity 
because of three reasons. One is so that he can show us the way. And the reason for this is in John 16, verse 13. It, and I'll read it for you. It reads, But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak on what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. So it is the Holy Spirit that is guiding us into our truth and showing us what the Lord wants us to know. Also, the second reason is to convict us of sin. John 16, verse 8 to 11 says, When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. The third reason why um, the Jesus came to dwell with us is to keep us from being deceived by the devil. I remember this in verse um, 1 Peter 5, verse 8. It says, 1 Peter 5, verse 8. It says, be alert and be of, so and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. The devil is looking for every opportunity to get us to to give up on Christ and to get us to sin. But with God, we are able to fight off his fiery attacks and be able to be saved from his um, from his dominion. Okay, thank you very much. Those are three pretty prolific points there. Um, it is very important, therefore, uh, you know, well, let me, let's go back a little bit. If, if Christ had come to this world, as um, uh, Sister Philogene said, died and left and gone back to heaven and left us here by ourselves, would we be able to make it? Uh, absolutely not. So what God, and this is the amazing thing about this love of God, um, what God has done is he has decided to stay with us so that he can give us the power to overcome sin. Uh, th there's no way we can make it through this world unless we had that power to overcome sin. Amen. And God has decided to stay with us uh, so, so that we can accomplish that. Uh, you know, as um, Elder Felicia brought out, the, the, the mother went to the classroom to stay with her child to make sure that the boy got his head together, that he got he stayed, he stayed focused, that he was able to concentrate on the, the, the mission ahead, that he should be successful in school. And, and the, the Holy Spirit comes to do that for us also. God has decided to stay with us so that we can become victorious. And I, I really hope and pray that we can all understand the nature of this mission of God and the love of God as he seeks to bring us back in a state of reunion. Yes, Jusan, I'll take you. You want another comment? Yes, I was going to say to piggyback on what Love said about God um, deciding to come to become one with us, um, I believe that he became human not only to, um, to save us from our sins, but also to show us that it's possible to live a holy life. Because one of the things that the devil said about God is, his rules are impossible to follow, and he is not a just God in, in, what, in the way he um, judges and the way he lives. But when God became one of us, he showed us that it is possible to, to be holy, to, to be um, free from living a life of sin, basically. All right. Harry, you want to add something to that? Yeah. Go ahead. You know, I, I, I love the point um, that you made, Doc, about you know, God went, uh, that God wants to be with us continually. I think there's the verse says that God became, John says, God became a man and dwelt among us. Like he came to see about us. He was, it wasn't this hands off, you know, situation, but God says, Hey, look, you know, not only did I come to understand what you're going through, but just know that I understand, but there's a savior who can pull you out of every situation. So I think that's why it's critically important uh, for us to continue to dwell in the presence of God because he, he, all he wants to do is to save us. Yes. Yes. Cause you know, and understanding, you know, if you're a soldier and you go in overseas to uh, be in battle, Harry, you you know, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you, you have to know what the mission is. The mission has to be clearly defined. You have to get instructions from your uh boss and the person who is sending you uh, on this mission, you have to have those clear in mind what you want to accomplish. God is the one who originated this mission. He right. knows what this mission is all about. He knows how to accomplish this mission. And he does everything possible, even things that 
basically blows our minds in, in his effort to make sure that we uh, are, are saved. So um, one of the most amazing things that he does um, is that he wants to come back and live with us, you know. You know. And, and so, so Harry, um, in, the, in making the mission uh, totally fulfilled, complete, as we are to put it in the circle, we used to be with him once upon a time, as right. Adley said, and he wants us to come back to be with him again. And in order to bring the, the mission full circle, um, he's going to do something special. Uh, so my question to you, Harry, what does the promise of God to return for his people to dwell with them do for our world? And for us individually, well, what what's, oh, what's what's so yeah. special about that? Well, what's special about that is that as Christians, you know, that's where you have to have that faith. You know, the, the just shall live by faith because he did say, right, um, in uh, John John fourteen one to three, and um, make it very clear that um, let let not heart be troubled. You see, make it very clear. Don't be troubled. Yeah. Okay, again, okay, you believe uh, believe in God. Mm-hmm. Believe also in me. And what you're what you, what you going to do, prepare mansions for us. And my father's house. Where That's where the truth comes in. You know, God doesn't lie. You see? And again, we have, he's going to prepare mansions for us. And again, that whosoever. Okay? And you see, therefore, we, we have the assurance. And again, to when this when this mission is over, we have a reward. You know, we have a reward. Heaven is a reward. And we, and we as God's children, we're going to be presented with the Father. You know, Lord, look what you, you, this, you, you, the children you give me, they stood with me, and they're here now. And, you, and, and so we, we can see it's a, it's a two-way street. And, you know, you do, you follow God's plan, and he's willing there to tell us. And again, and, when, and this again promises again, too, when we, when we accept this promise, we see there will be no more sin. There will be no more tears. Could you imagine that? No more sickness. You know, we, we all we all have had death in our families, and you see, it, it's very it's very painful, and all those things that the Lord made it very clear. Also, in the book of Nahum one nine, He says, um, He will He will He will just they would sin will come a second time, and that's another, another a, a, a amazing word from the good Lord. Sin to come again? Could you imagine that? And God said, never happen again. So we have to believe in believe what God say, and whatever He say, brethren, it will not go void. It will come to pass. And that's why as Christians, we have to be very faithful and willing to accept what God is telling us to, to, to do. And again, uh, you see, in, in, in the last days, we are in the last days right now. And it's just for us to be ready. But any time when we burst those clouds, we can say, yes, Lord, we are waiting for you. Okay? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, Adelie, you want to add? Yeah, I was going to say, you know, you, know, you, you talked about what, what does the promise of God return does. I mean, it, we're talking about the second coming. Yes, You yes. know, mm-hmm. if you really think about it, after the fall, you know, not only Adam and Eve, but us as well. The only thing that we had to look forward to was death. I mean, if you really think about it, every morning that we wake up, everything that you do, it's just to go to, just, it's just to die, you know? So I think, you know, what it does for us as a human race is like, man, because God has given us eternal life, we, we're not living in, in life by chance or all the different uh, evolutionary theories that say, hey, you know, survival of the fittest and all these different things. Right, right. We still have a purpose. We still have meaning. We still have a, a plan that God has outlined for us. And as a result, it should transform us. It should, it should make us excited about waking up tomorrow because, you know, in the morning. Because when I wake up today, I'm, you know, I don't, have, I don't have to look forward to that. I can look forward to pursuing right. things. I can look forward to looking and being like Christ because as a result of what he has done for me, I know that even if I die, that God is going to come back and get me. And Amen. I think that should transform us not only um, to do what we need to do, but to continue to be missionaries like our Heavenly Father as well. You know, as Love uh, sort of introduced us to a little while ago in Revelation 21, verse 3, it says, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. Right. They shall be his people. God himself so shall, shall be, be with God. them right. and be their God. This is what we have to look forward to. This is what God wants to do. And one day soon he will uh, 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 announce Mission accomplished. Amen. That 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 the the desire to be reunited with these people that he created as 
uh, Le Philosophe said, that he cared so much about that he wanted to be a part of him, that one day again, he will come back and he will dwell with us. You know, I, I, I like that word dwell. Right. It, it, it mm -hmm. makes us know that he's going to take up residence among us. It's like, I go to live at Sister Philogene's house. I'm dwelling there. I'm in her house right, day right. and night. Everybody knows that Carrington is, is at that house. And, and she could have full access to me and I could have full access to her anytime. And I look forward to the day when I will have full access to God. Very good. Can, can a you, can a key, <laughs> point, key point again, you said, let's Go, make it very yes, clear. Uh, his, his most precious promise is the blessed hope. Yes. And that's what we have to understand, you know. You, your, your family member, they, may, they passed away, yes. But you know, uh -huh, just now we see again. And that's, that's what you see as a, as a Christian. We don't, as, as, the, as Paul said, we don't mourn as others do. Because you know, uh huh, what the Bible tells us, I'll come again and I will receive you unto myself. So that's where we have to be and keep us stronger and stronger each day as we go in this, in this yeah. business as Christianity. So, in summary, um, I'm just going to pass on to each of you. Yeah, um, you, you can um, uh, let me know. Uh, you know, we don't have a lot of time, we have a couple of minutes left for now. Um, can you please explain why God's mission to man is, is so important? Why is this so important to uh, make it personal? Why, you, why is this thing so important to you? Uh, Dusan, can I start with you? Why, why is this mission so important? Mm. This this mission is important to me because um, we we need to give the living word to a dying world. This world is very evil and wicked, and there's so many bad things going on right now. And as people are just the main thing is people are looking for is hope, and there's just no hope in anyone else but Jesus Christ. So the mission is to tell us about Christ so that they too can receive the joy that we feeling that we receive from Christ. Love and, and what do you? What's, why, why is this mission so important to you? Um, as we as we look at everything going on around the world, uh, people suffering, and there is a lot of uh, uh, death. But some people they don't really know what is God. But as a Christian, we have to show them what is really God. That we have hope. There's one day, God gonna come. And then everything we've seen now, they're not going to happen. Uh, we're not going to have no more sorrow, no more pain. Mm. So we're going we're gonna to live uh, the way that we want. For me, I can't wait to see God. Because all of these things happen, you know, so many things. So I don't feel, I don't feel comfortable or... Uh, because I remember one day I was talking to one of my friends. I said, okay, can I talk to you about God? He said, God. He said, I don't believe in this. I said, why? He said, I don't want to talk about this. Let me live my life. I said, no, you, mm -hmm. have, you have to know something about God. Because uh, uh, we see everything happen now is for a reason. But you have to, you have to know that one day... Uh, for the second coming of God, you have to be ready. Because we don't know, we don't know when. But you have to be ready. Even though, I mean, you don't trust God. But one day, you're going to call me and then say, Yeah, hey, can you tell me about this God? Because, you know, uh, uh, we cannot live the way we live now. Okay, thank you, thanks a lot. Yeah, okay. Uh, Harry, you will take what your yes, final comment. Yeah, the, yeah just, one, just sometime, going. sometime this week, a gentleman was on the bridge about to jump off the bridge, but the policeman's mission was to talk him out of doing that. And we can see as the policeman telling him that it, everything is okay, and I, as he went closer to the young man, everything is okay, don't worry, we, we're here to help you. He was able to not do that. So as Christians, we have that mission. You know, just be kind. You have a relationship with the people and say, God, it, it, will, it will get better, but believe what Christ tells us. But hang on, don't give up. 30 seconds, Adley. Seconds. Yeah, I'll make it quick. I think, I think this mission is so important um, because if God doesn't save me, I'll never be able to see him. Have mercy. I'll Have never mercy. be able to meet the, my creator and truly be in his image. So I think this mission is important to us because if not, we'll never see him again. Uh, that sums it up. That sums it up. Um, ladies and gentlemen, remember to take the quiz after our uh, Sabbath school uh, is completed here. And we'll see you next week. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Almighty God, we are so thankful to you for loving us so much that you decide to take on this task of leading us back to glory, leading us back to you, 
leading us back to a home in glory where you will dwell with us and we will dwell with you. Father, we all look forward to that day. Bless us and help us to be ready for that day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So have a wonderful Sabbath and we'll see you again next week. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. I am Dr. Judith Ray McCalla, and today I am doing the health nugget on menopause, and we're doing part one. <clears throat> and October is World Menopause Awareness Month. And given that our church is predominantly female, and the median age of our church membership is 51, I think this is a great topic that we need to talk about and just educate people about. So I'm going to provide information to the women and the men in their lives today. So our next slide. So what is menopause? It's not a disease. It's not a disorder. It's a normal part of aging. And menopause really is the time that marks the end of a woman's menstrual cycles. And it's diagnosed after a woman has not had a period for 12 consecutive months. And it can typically happen in your 40s or 50s, but the average age is 51, the same age as our church membership. <clears throat> so, next slide. 
So when menopause happens, it is due to the ovaries which stop producing hormones. These hormones are estrogen and progesterone. And these hormones regulate your menstrual cycle. And the symptoms that a woman experiences is because of the fluctuations in the hormones during this time and right before this time. And it affects each woman uniquely. Symptoms that I have may not be the same as you have or your friend has. <clears throat> so next slide. What are the causes of menopause? There's natural menopause. And natural menopause happens with a natural depletion and the aging of a woman's finite number of eggs. When you're born, you're born with a certain number of eggs. And as you age, those eggs get released. And when they're done, they're done. And that's natural menopause. Then you have premature menopause, which is due to some autoimmune disorders. And that means that you stop having a period really early, before age 40, um, and does not recur. And then the third one is probably the most common one after natural, and that is induced menopause. And this is when there is damage or destruction or some kind of injury to the ovaries where the hormones are produced. For some women, when they have a total hysterectomy and they take out the ovaries, this is what can happen if you have chemotherapy or you have radiation. This can also damage your ovaries. And when those things happen, you go into instant menopause, and it is very intense. The symptoms are much more intense than if it happened in the natural way. Next slide. So what are some, some of the factors that influence when menopause starts? Well, the first thing you can do is think about genetics. And in 50% of the cases, the genetics gives you an indication. So look at when your mother started or the other women in your family, and that can give you an idea. Uh, the second one is the age when you first had your first period. Remember, you have a finite number of eggs. So if you start having it early, you will have menopause early. And if you are on oral contraceptives, you will have menopause later because oral contraceptives delay the egg being released. And that's why you have later menopause. And if you have pregnancy at a later age, you're also likely to have later menopause. Next slide. There are two other symptoms, that, uh, two other factors that influence when a woman can go into menopause. This next one is body mass index. And body mass index is how uh, big you are, how fat you are. And if you're underweight, and I mean really skinny, and 18 and a half is your body mass index, um, you're linked to early menopause. To give you an idea, my BMI is like 22 point something. So think about a much smaller person. They go into early menopause. But somebody who has a BMI of 30, which is categorized as obese, they are likely to have menopause starting later. And smokers, tend to go into menopause um, almost three years earlier than women who are non-smokers if they're smoking uh, at least 14 cigarettes a day. Next slide. So we have that transition, and I wanna talk about the transition because it has like really three parts. The first one um, is the pre-menopause, and then you're typically in your 30s, you're not really noticing any noticeable symptoms, um, but your hormones are starting to have a little shift, especially late 30s. Then we get into perimenopause in the 40s, and that's when everything hits the fan. Um, and that's when, you know, you have the missed periods and the weight gain and all the other symptoms which we will discuss in a minute. And then menopause, happens in the 50s, average is around 51, and that's 12 consecutive months with no period. Now, this transition is usually eight to 10 years, but hold on to your seats. It can be up to 14 years for some women. Okay, 
In the United States, 75 million women fall into one of those categories. And 6,000 women hit menopause every day. This is an aging society. Next slide. So let's talk about frequent symptoms. The first symptom I want to talk about is the irregular periods. So um, they can be shorter, they can be longer than usual, they can skip months, and you're like, ooh, I haven't had it for three months, yay, boom, it comes. You know, here's the thing to be careful of. You can get pregnant during this time. You've seen these late babies? This is why, because they think they're in menopause, but they're not. They're in perimenopause. Okay, so be careful and use protection. <laughs> then we have the vasomotor symptoms. Oh, I forgot to bring my fan up here because I was gonna use my prop to show everybody. You see all the women in church fanning, right? The vasomotor symptoms, hot flashes and night sweats. Okay, what is a hot flash? It is a sensation of flushing. You feel a sudden heat and it's typically in the upper part of your body, but it can be all of your body. And 75% of women say they experience this. Now, it can be mild or it can be strong. And the length of time that it lasts varies. It can be as short as 30 seconds or as long as 10 minutes. So when this hot flash hits you, some women start to sweat profusely, and others just have a mist. If you're in the mist category, you're blessed. <laughs> if you're in the sweat, big drops of sweat, have extra clothes. And, and that's what I can say to you now. How often does it happen? Well, it can happen several times in an hour. It can happen just a few times a day. It can happen once or twice in a week. So it really varies. And you don't know necessarily, if you're like, well, this is what I'm having, and you talk to even a sibling, a sister, or a cousin, it may not be the same, okay? Now, if the hot flashes happen at night, that's called night sweats. And the first time it hits you, you're like, whoa, my clothes are soaking wet. Again, have an extra change of nightwear that you can put on because it's going to happen. And it can happen for years. It doesn't have to be just a short period of time. It tends to peak, though, in the early stage. Okay, the next symptoms I want to talk about, these are frequent symptoms, or vaginal dryness, which um, uh, the genital urinary symptoms. Vaginal dryness causing uncomfortable or painful intercourse and urinary problems, such as increased urinary tract infections. And why does this happen? Well, this happens because as your estrogen starts to decrease, the walls of your bladder, your urethra and your vagina become drier and less flexible, and therefore the tissue that lines it becomes more easily damaged and more prone to infection and causes all of these issues. Next slide. We also can experience mood swings. Now, women will say, as estrogen declines, women will say that they find themselves becoming emotional and they are more easily triggered into strong emotional reactions. Sadness, anger, irritation, whatever. <clears throat> it's not a permanent state. So that is the good news. <laughs> now the next one is headaches. Now migraine and tension headaches can increase, but I have to say, in my life, uh, I had my migraines that started at age 12, when I started having my period, and when I hit menopause, my migraines decreased. So it can go the other way, praise God. So you don't know, like I said, it's always unique. Another common symptom, insomnia. 
Okay, so when we have insomnia, women tend to be more, they go to bed, they're wide awake. The husband is snoring away next, and it's like, what is happening? Cannot sleep. This is due to menopause, and it's also due to night sweats and something called neurological excitability. It's like you can't shut down. And when you wake up, sometimes it's difficult to go back to sleep. So when we think about all of these things together, what are we saying? Women are sleep deprived in menopause. And when you're sleep deprived, you know you can be a little irritable, okay? And next slide. We experience some body changes. This might be the most distressing after the hot flashes for women. Okay, so when we have the body changes, we have weight gain due to that slower metabolism. And this results in a changing pattern of fat deposits in your body. So when fat was distributed to the hips, etc., it might move up now when it's deposited in your abdomen and your arms and legs look kind of flabby. And women are not happy about this look. Um, and so the other thing you might notice is your hair starts to get thin and dry, your skin gets dry, and you might lose breast fullness. So they start to go south. These are all body changes that can happen during menopause. We have memory and cognitive changes. Some women become very forgetful, short-term memory. Some women experience like brain fog. This is something, if it starts affecting your ability to function, you should go see your doctor. We have fatigue. Remember, you're not sleeping well, so you can experience fatigue. Um, and this is also due to the decrease in your hormone estrogen. <clears throat> and finally, we have decreased libido. And so women may not have sexual desire as much as they wanted before, and it's tied into some of the genital urinary issues that we talked about before. Um, and this can be addressed, and we will address it in the next section. Next slide, please. So if you're interested, there is a free menopause um, webinar at this address. You can take a picture of the screen, um, and you can sign up. All you need is your name and your email address, and it is going to be Tuesday, October 17th from, one, from 12 to 1, and the doctors will be on talking about perimenopause and menopause and giving you some effective solutions. I thought it would be very interesting. And our final slide. Um, for part two, we will talk about how black women experience menopause differently. We're going to talk about some other com less common symptoms, some complications, and what to do to treat it and how to cope with it. So I'll see you guys next week, and bring your fan. Thank you.